invent, seek, explore, till we uncover answers. Change drives us from the moth to the butterfly, from the clay to the pot. That is why at RK University, we educate through discovery. We shape thinkers and self-learners, making knowledge an exciting journey. Opening new doors and steering into new horizons, our students are a generation of tomorrow, a timeless tribe of change makers. When the fire burns within them, we rouse it to scale greater heights. When ideas germinate, we support our students to become entrepreneurs and help them cultivate it to bring about revolutions of change. At RKU, they are the nucleus, surrounded by a circle of learning, nurtured by hands of knowledge. By giving them a global exposure, we allow understanding to seep through project-based learning. They get their hands dirty, assess real situations, unfold new theories in our labs and find holistic answers to every hurdle that comes their way. Interweaving happiness and learning, the university provides a vibrant atmosphere to fashion well-rounded personalities who are people of thought, people of freedom. Powered by spirit of inquiry, they move into the world on wise words and firm foundations. Each day, they pave a path that arches forward for themselves and those that will follow. At RKU, we make worlds meet. We craft trailblazers who shape better futures. We look forward together, standing firm on today's lessons and the possibilities of tomorrow. For the world is not our oyster. The universe is. Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are ready to attend day two of Business Writing Skills webinar. Today, we are going to discuss about intermediate level. Are we all ready? Good to go? Before you sit and take your chairs, I would request you to take a notepad and a pen because today we are going to have a lot of questions. And you can jot down your answers on the notepad and can then add it in the chat window. Giving you one minute to get, go and get your notepad and pen. Yesterday, my colleague, shared the details about business writing skills, which was at beginner's level. And today, I, Vaishali Sheth Mawani, is going to present on intermediate level of business writing skills. I'll try to make this webinar interactive. However, I may not be able to listen to your voice. Please add lots of comments, questions, queries that you may have during the webinar in the chat window. Let me just talk about who we are. RK University has established Center for English as a second language. We are unique with regards to that. Unlike most organizations have their language departments which caters to the communication, the theory aspect of communication skills. We at Center for English as a Second Language cater to the aspirants, the learners needs with regards to the practical skills that is LSRW. Since past four years, 
we have been providing coaching and exams for business english cambridge qualifications and i am very happy and proud to say that more than 120 students have successfully passed it recently we took an initiative to establish cambridge authorized exam center and once again i am proud to say that we are the first university in gujarat to establish shtc cambridge authorized exam center with this center we offer all the cambridge qualifications because of all our in house facilities we are able to conduct computer based as well as paper based exams moreover we are also an ielts registration center with british council moving on before i talk about business writing skills at intermediate level i would like you to just go through the chart that you can see it on your screen cfr level is the common european framework of reference used for all languages this is the chart that shows all the cambridge qualifications that is offered by cambridge assessment english you can see on your uh, right the ielts and the bands that are there from b1 to c2 and today we are going to talk about business vantage that is back vantage at b2 level which is equivalent to 5.5 to 6.5 ielts bands now what is the difference between business english and ielts let me quickly brief you about it ielts is just a gateway for visas it's a band score and hence it has a validity only for 2 years while business english back qualification is a certificate and is valid for life b2 is also accepted in place of ielts by many universities across the globe and we have our own students our own alumni who have taken admissions in germany with the scores that they have achieved through business vantage exam hence friends i would once again like to mention today we are going to give just an overview about business vantage writing skills moving forward a quick explanation about business english certificates yes it is international recognized qualification and i would like to mention here most of the multinational companies like google uh, wipro tcs they approve of all these qualifications and they rather desire that their employees have business vantage certification yes it is a credential in itself this particular certificate helps you learn all the practical language skills and it is used in professional context it has three levels business prelims which was discussed yesterday and today we are going to just give an overview about the writing skills of business vantage which is at intermediate level and then the higher highest level is business higher which is equivalent to ielts band 8 Here is the exam format uh, for business vantage. Again, as you know, all Cambridge English qualifications cater to help you enhance all the reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills of the language. And hence, there is a particular format with it. This is just an exam format. with the duration and the part it has i would quickly just look at what it aims you to learn this particular credential when you acquire you can actually demonstrate that you can deal confidently with different types of text such as business publications correspondence 
you can actually read and interpret it very well. Then when we talk about writing, you are required to present two different pieces of writing, which could be a letter, an email, a report, or a proposal. And it has specified word limits as well. Talking about listening skills, it requires you to be able to follow and understand a range of spoken materials. Yes, sometimes it could be monologues, self-introduction, some kind, it could be just an interview and you have to listen, understand, follow it and then interpret to answer the questions related to it. Speaking, it is into a different format. Speaking with business English is in two is to one format. What is two is to one format? There are two candidates and one examiner wherein the candidates interact with one another and uh, the examiner will try and just evaluate your skills with regards to the rubrics that they have designed. This particular skill tests your ability to communicate effectively in face-to-face -face situations. Yes, there are a lot of such situations while giving presentations, discussions, meetings, where we need to demonstrate our linguistic skills. I have a question for you. So I'm sure you're ready with your pen and paper. What are the ways and how do we correspond with our colleagues, business associates, clients, and partners? I'm sure you will take a moment and write down your answers. You can share your answers in the chat video also. Some examples of business correspondence that you may have in your workplace. All right, time is up. Here are a few examples to share with you all. It could be an email, a text message, a memo, a proposal, a report, letters, circular notices, notes, anything, right? I'm sure you have most of these or maybe few of these or maybe additionally you could have some more examples. By the way, I have one other question also. The WhatsApp message that you receive from your boss, your authority or your leader and when you reply to them, do you use SMS lingo or do are you mindful of writing a complete message? In case, if you are using SMS lingo, I'm sure at the end of this webinar, you will understand one should refrain doing so. It's always advisable to write complete text message and not the short forms of it because it never produces a good impression to the authority or the leader or any business associate. With regards to back vantage writing skills, considering the business aspect, the workplace language, Cambridge has actually identified the exam format in a manner so that we learn, we practice, and we produce two different writing skills, two different writing tasks rather. It could be a note, a memo, an email, which will have a word limit of 40 to 50 words. And the second piece of correspondence that you're expected to produce could be a letter, a fax, or an email, or a proposal or a report writing with some data analysis, some statistical analysis, some charts, some graphs, some just text information. And it has 120 to 140 word limit. By the way, why do you think is Cambridge asking us to have specific word limits? Any answers to that? There must be some reason behind, uh, you know, asking us to refrain us not to use or exceed beyond 50 words or beyond 140 words. What is that? Could you please just answer that in the chat window?
Thank you again. Here are a lot of questions. What is the difference between uh, just English and business English? Do we communicate in the same manner with our friends and also with our colleagues? No? All right. Then when we communicate with our colleagues and our subordinates and the, our leaders, is it just the same or is it different? Yes, definitely it is different. Why is it so? What is the difference? The emails, the messages or any written correspondence that we use in our daily work life, does it carry any impression? Yes, it does. As uh, the professor at the university, I insist that all my learners produce a wonderful resume so that they create an impeccable impressions in front of their prospective employers. But is it just then that we need to produce the impeccable impression or even later? We need to maintain the image that we have built. Any correspondence that represents us needs to be perfect, isn't it? Hence, this particular webinar is going to give you highlights of how to produce that particular correspondence which will carry your wonderful impression. I'm sure you write, think twice before you respond to a formal communication and especially when it comes from your superior. What are some of these challenges that we all face it while replying a mail or drafting a proposal or creating a report? Sometimes when we write it and we just send it, then we realize, oh God, I missed out a point. I could have drafted properly. Maybe it needed some editing. Yeah? Has that happened with you? It happens many a times with me. So, what are those challenges and how can we overcome it? Let's watch it out later. Are we carried about conveying the exact message? Sometimes we feel, no, this is not what I wanted to say. Maybe it could have been interpreted differently, right? Maybe I could have used a better vocabulary. Vocabulary. What about the formality, the register? Yes, it will always be different with the target reader. Hence, friends, let's look at some nitty-gritties of business writing skills, the Cambridge way. We want our formal or business communications to be surely complete, clear, exact, accurate, correct, concise, all of these. Yes, as I rightly mentioned, in one word, it can be impeccable impression. It carries your image. It is your image builder. Here is the task one for you all. I'm going to read along with you. Let's read it very clearly. The department you work for overspent its budget last month and has now been told to cut cost. Write an email to staff in your department saying how much the department overspent, explaining why the department overspent, telling staff what they must do to cut cost, and all these things should be drafted, should be replied in 40 to 50 words. Not one more, not one less. No 39, no 51. Okay, have you read the text carefully? I'm sure you have. In that case, I ask you to underline a few things that you should take care. Mm, but before that, this is the first strategy that we should have before actually writing the reply or answering this response. Mm, okay, 
Yes, I can see some responses in the chat window. All right. Fine. Have you underlined those keywords? Have you underlined or identified who the reader is? By the way, what's your role here when you're writing the response? Not sure? Okay. Who are you then? Let's look at this. What is the purpose behind writing the response out here? The department you work for. And you're writing to your staff. So here you are probably a leader, an authority, some position you may have. And hence, you're going to instruct your staff about how much did you overspend? Why did you do that? And what are the measures that you can take in? So the purpose is clear information and clear instruction that you are going to pass it from probably the top authority to your subordinates. And this is very important to identify your target reader. Your target reader is emailed to your staff. Your register, your formality will surely depend on your target reader. Email to staff means they are junior to you probably and you have some position. Hence, the tone will surely depend on that. What are the key factors, things, what will your content be about? Same, how much the department overspent? Why did it overspend? So you got to explain it, you got to reason it out and how can we compensate or how, what are the measures that we can take it to compensate the loss that we may have. I'm giving you few minutes just to mind map your own answer. I only want you to scribble. I don't want you to write in a proper format. You could think of a response for this. Try and see whether you are able to do it in 40 to 50 words or not. Yes, here's a moment for you. You can take any example from your own experience. It can be any amount. Nothing specific needs to be mentioned out here. You can assume a designation you wish to have in your life. You can think of the style, the formality. Are you done? Okay, great. Let's look at the sample answer. Here's the sample answer. Unfortunately, due to exceptional cost at the Amsterdam trade fair, which we had not budgeted for, we are 5.6 lakhs over budget. Could you please therefore make every effort to reduce expenditure by phoning clients instead of visiting them in person whenever possible until further notice? Can you tell me how many sentences are there here? There are just two sentences. Unfortunately, to budget. That's just one sentence. And could you to notice? That is the second sentence. But within these two sentences, you can actually see that a lot of content has been covered. Everything has been covered, sorry. And also, you can see that it has a complex sentence structure. By the way, what are these highlighted words suggesting? Exceptional cost, not budgeted for, 5.6 lakhs, by phoning clients instead of visiting them in person. What are all these? Yes, they are the answers to the highlighted words here in the sample question. How much is 5.6? Why is the Exceptional cost at the Amsterdam trade fair, which was not budgeted for. 
We did not have any budget for it and we had an exceptional cost. We went out of the budget, right? So what are the measures that we should take? What they must do? What they must do? It should be an instruction and the instruction is here. Could you please therefore make every effort? There is please here, but there is model auxiliary also. Could you please therefore make every effort to reduce the expenditure by phoning clients instead of visiting them in person whenever possible until further notice. There is slightly a contradiction here if you could see it. Could you please is a milder tone while until further notice is an instruction. It is imposed. So, Whenever we are writing to our subordinates, we can surely use please, appreciate, all these kind of words. But at the same time, there has to be a stricter tone as well because you are asking them to do something. What is unfortunately here, by the way? What is the role of unfortunately? It is a linking word. Yes, the entire text, the answer has started with a linking word. We will see what are linking words in our next few samples that we are going to see during the webinar. But my friends, I hope this is clear that we can use these kind of phrases, exceptional cost, not budgeted for, appropriate punctuations to construct a complex structure, a complex sentence. Could you please therefore make every effort? Again, definitely you are mentioning something, but to do what? The right preposition to reduce exp expenditure. How? By phoning clients. So again, another preposition used here, right? This is the way we actually create or construct a complex sentence. And this clearly shows that our linguistic writing ability is at intermediate level. All right, what is the objective of Cambridge behind asking or giving us this simple task and producing the simple answer? The objective behind this task is to test your ability to whether you can avoid irrelevance. Was there any ir irrelevant material response, anything there in the answer? Let's look at it. There is no irrelevance here. Exceptional budget, no irrelevance, not budgeted. So both these are all connected to our point of number one. 5.6, again, how much and how they get compensated, right? So it's written concisely, 40 to 50 words. Friends, the native speakers of English from the countries like US, Europe, and South Africa, Australia, Canada, they are very competent in writing or speaking concisely. Knowing English language doesn't mean we elaborate things. Writing perfectly in a concise manner shows your competency about writing with details and accuracy. So write concisely and avoid irrelevance. Communicate the correct content. It's very, very important. Whatever is demanded, only we should stick to that and nothing beyond that. The correct content should be communicated. Also, it should not be missed out. Out of those three points which were asked, if we miss out any, Again, we are not communicating everything. Write using an appropriate formality. I did mention about this. Appropriate formality in the sense, the register, the authority, the tone, the style with which you write something. If it is written to a superior, definitely the tone will be milder. Use appropriate grammar and vocabulary. It is very nicely showcased here that grammar, exceptional cost, not budgeted for, the prepositions used here, the construction of the complex structure, everything clearly shows 
that the grammar and vocabulary both are in its place. Link your ideas so that the text is coherent. What is coherence? We will see it in detail, but when you have more than one or two ideas to communicate, you will link them and make it coherent so that it looks all together in one piece of text. I'm sure this particular sample has helped you acquire a little bit of knowledge with regards to some strategies, right? Friends, today we are not just going to discuss only about English language, but today the most important thing that you are going to take away is some strategies which you should be using while drafting a business correspondence. Let's go to the more complex task. You can see here is a writing task and you got to write a report. There is a lot of information on your screen you can see. Let's quickly read what is there in front of us. The retail company you work for would like to improve the way it communicates with its customers. Your line manager has asked you to write a report about communication problems there have been and make a recommendation for improving the situation. Look at the information below on which you have already made some handwritten notes. Write a report with 120 to 140 words. Okay, so have we read the instruction before the text, the additional information that is given over here, right? Once again, let's read whatever instructions are there in the question. The retail company you work for. So you're working for a retail company. So now you know who you are representing would like to improve the way it communicates with its customers. So the communication, there's some issue in communication with the customers and would like to improve that. The company would like to improve the communication that's happening with the customers. There's some problem seen, identified. Your line manager, so your line manager is your superior, has asked you to write a report. What sort of piece of written text is demanded, a report. So the format will change about communication problems there have been and make a recommendation. So two things are very important. About the communication problems, you got to do some survey behind it for that and make a recommendation also to improve the situation. This is your job, a report to line manager so with some recommendation and you're working so you are somebody, a junior manager or someone. Now let's look at the information and the handwritten notes. These are the handwritten notes given in red and we are very and they are very important and we must never miss it out. Again, the report has word limit of 120 to 140 words because Cambridge wants on us to write concisely. We need to improve the way we communicate with our customers. Can you give me some details of complaints received about the following? So this is the information and about the following, there are three areas, marketing letters sent by company, time taken to answer customers' phone calls, face-to-face -face communication with staff, do you think we have lost customers because of poor communication? Can you also recommend a solution to the problem? Now, this is the scenario presented to, here, uh, to you and this is what your line manager has actually written to you. We need to improve the way we communicate and the details of complaint with regards to three, three areas. Number one, marketing letters. Number two, time taken to answer customers' phone calls. And number three is face-to-face -face communication with, with the staff. Okay. And then there is also a question. Have we lost customers because of our poor communication? 
and what could be the possible solution, right? We got to ask this. When you have something like this in front of you, in your inbox, I'm sure you're going to do some mind mapping, some research, some homework before you actually start writing the reply. Yes, too many. Explain. What is too many? Marketing letters sent by company. There are too many. Explain effect on customers. So you are going to explain what is the effect on customers when you send a lot of marketing letters. Customers wait too long for phone calls. And it's never right to keep anybody waiting. Explain why customers are not happy. Why customers are not happy with face-to-face -face communication with the staff? And what are the recommendations? Recommend more staff uh, training and have we lost customers? Yes, we have. So what percentage, what number, some statistics here. And whenever we are writing a report, it is advised that we use some statistics. Are we ready? Are you going to scribble the answer for this particular report? I don't want you to uh, really write a proper report, but maybe you can just think of who is the target reader? Who are you here? Which we have already discussed. How are you going to answer this? Too many marketing letters. And what is the effect? What kind of vocabulary are you going to use? Have you thought about some linking words? Some connectors? Customers wait too long. How are you going to represent that? Explain why customers are not happy. Some details, some percentage here and some recommendation. Yes, your answer should have this. The first and the foremost strategy, I am sure you have a notepad with you to note down this particular strategy. Every time you write a response or you draft a report, it's very, very important to read everything in detail. The entire text the entire information that you may have on your screen, in your inbox, or otherwise, it's very, very important to read, reread, identify the keywords, and then start writing. But will you write directly, or will you try and make some mind map, some scribbling, some ideas somewhere? And I'm sure you are going to then start writing. So these highlighted words, report about communication problems, recommendation, handwritten notes, all these things, all three areas must be included in your report. Are you done? Shall I show you the simple answer? Few more seconds? All right, I can wait. Here is a sample answer. Report on customer communication problems. Yes, your report should have a title. This needs not to be included 120 to 140 words. That will be only during the exam. But definitely your report should be concise. Otherwise, people will go asleep reading your report. Lengthy reports are never read fully. The report on customer complaint problem, communication problems. As you can see, these are three areas. The introduction, customer complaints, and recommendations. Entire report is actually divided into three parts. Introduction is the opening. It will tell the reader what is this piece of correspondence? So here, the purpose of this report is to summarize our recent customer communication difficulties and to suggest a solution. By the way, 
how can we write the introduction? The best way to write the perfect introduction is to read the information given before the exact question that is there. The retail company you work, so your job is to write about the communication problems and make a recommendation for improving the situation. That should go in your introduction. The purpose of this report and what are you doing here? Summarizing. Summarizing all the com customer communication difficulties that are there and to suggest a solution. You are going to write two things here. And both those things are mentioned in the introduction itself. Let's look at the customer complaint details, which is all those three highlighted areas. Marketing letter sent by the company, time taken to answer customer phone calls, and face-to-face -face communication with staff. You have already tried and written some points here on your own. Now you are mentioning those in the answer. So, our customers have given us feedback on a number of areas of discontent. All three areas mentioned here on a number of areas of discontent. It can be dissatisfaction, it can be anything else, but the best vocabulary out here that is given here in the simple answer is discontent. It could be dissatisfaction also. Unsatisfied, we can also uh, mention that our customers have given us a feedback. They, they are not satisfied with a number of areas, in many areas, whatever. Firstly, they complain that we flirt them with direct mail, most of which is thrown away unread and is therefore ineffective. Now, out of those three areas, the first thing that you want to mention. So how are you going to start? From here, you're jumping to the first point. When you are transiting, it's very, very important that you use some transition words. What are those transition words? Firstly, to begin with, initially, all these could be used here. So you want to mention about the first point. To start with, they complain that we flirt them. There are plenty. Instead of plenty, it's written over here, we flirt them with direct mail. And most of which, so there's comma punctuation here, most of which is thrown away unread. Without reading would not be the correct grammar and is therefore ineffective. So it loses the purpose. The reason we, we are uh, sharing with them, sending them. So it's ineffective. Rather than not effective, it's ineffective. Also, our help desk is too slow answering calls. Now, help desk is face-to-face -face communication. No, it's the phone calls. So our help desk is too slow in answering these calls that we receive, causing them to ring off. Causing them, asking, I mean, in, indirectly you want the customers to put them off. So, to ring off. A wonderful phrasal verb used here. Using phrasal verbs at intermediate and advanced level really, really enriches your piece of text that you're writing, the correspondence that you make. This will surely create a wonderful impression. Flood them ring off. These are wonderful phrasal verbs. Finally, so you are coming now to the third point. Several customers mentioned our assistant's generally unhelpful attitude. Because there is an apostrophe S here for more than one assistant, it's not the way we have written here. Finally, several customers mentioned our assistant's generally unhelpful attitude, which causes irritation, which causes irritation. Definitely, that again adds to the discontent, dissatisfaction, right? And gradually, it will result into losing the customers. 
all this led to a number of our former customers telling us they no longer it's written on over here there's a typo they no longer want to shop with us resulting in a drop of 20% resulting in a 20% drop in sales over the last year so there is some statistics given here and you can see the body is including everything that should be communicated to the line manager right you mentioning all three areas asked and then you what you're saying is also using perfect grammar let's look at the recommendations to remedy these problems i would strongly recommend that we implement a customer care training program for all customer service staff here this is a very short but a crisp recommendation to remedy these problems to give a solution to these problems i suggest i strongly recommend that we implement a customer care training program for all customer service staff 120 to 140 words all included your introduction your body and your ending everything is there it is a structured report which has a lot of grammar in place which also communicates and conveys to the reader that you are perfect with your writing skills let's look at quickly the details report on customer now let's look at these summarize a recent uh, the reason i have highlighted all these words is to help you understand the nitty gritties of the structure that is there in front of your eyes summarize a recent customer communication difficulties it's more than one so it's mentioned there right and to suggest a solution so that is there now what are the customer complaints all three areas it's mentioned we have understood the content but my dear friends in this particular webinar we are going to help you understand the grammar aspect the structure the nitty gritties the cambridge way yes areas of discontent more than one the satisfaction can be used but maybe the structure would change the structure of the sentence firstly therefore also finally all this what are these all the letters in pink they are nothing but the connectors the linking words or the transition words when you are switching from one point to the other it's advisable to use these transition words it helps you to transit easily perfectly and also shows that you have a clear understanding thrown away unread flood them unhelpful attitude causes irritation all these in red are showing that you can use phrasal verbs correctly and it helps you to build complex sentence structure right so all in all the first tip or the strategy is what to read the text that is there in front of you repeatedly maybe more than once twice to identify the target reader to scribble some points to make a mind map before you actually start writing your response to think about the connectors the linking words to think about the phrasal words that could be used maybe some paraphrasing words when we it was mentioned in the question that there there are plenty instead of plenty we have written flood them ineffective they are it is mentioned as unread so that is paraphrasing during the entire webinar if you have heard very carefully i have used superior authority leader all these are paraphrasing words for a particular verb paraphrasing skills are very very important in life and yes definitely when you are thinking to give any cambridge english exam 
to remedy instead of to remedy i could have used something to present a solution to these problems all in all to conclude to suggest anything could be added out here right i am sure with the second sample of a complex task that we've just finished your understanding for business writing skills at b2 level is surely benefiting enhancing i'm very happy that you have invested your time and i'm able to contribute in enhancing your skills shall we move forward and look at something more that was about report writing yes we also have report writings with some statistical data some charts some figures i have not uh, included the same here uh, with some technical limitations the images of graph or bar chart or pie chart out here but in case if you come across and you have to write such a report i am going to quickly share with you some vocabulary which could be of help to you these are the strategies that we just talked about read the text carefully reread underline the keywords look for main points asked very very important what is the essence of your uh, the question and the same way the essence of the response that you are writing identify your role when you write a response who are you what is your role at that point in time how should you write when you identify your role it will be your register your formality your style your tone which will be of help also try and see who are you addressing both these will help you to identify the register and the formality the style mind map your answer and think about quality vocab phrasal verbs linking words complex sentence structure coherence everything together now these are some tips while writing a report with some charts and graphs when whenever we are presented with some charts and graphs there is some comparison that we need to make it is wonderful when you are able to use quality words it will actually enrich your particular text examples there are these are few examples with regards to the comparison that you need to make have risen maybe so it, i'm talking about the graph at that time it's have risen it's plateau dropped the sales have dropped it has dived dipped there is a dramatic rise in um in the cases of corona virus in gujarat particularly in andabar there is gradual increase at some place there is rapid fall maybe it is stagnant here in rajkot gradually it will decline there is some fluctuation in few areas steep fall level off consistent growth consistent growth with regards to gdp of our country with regards to some sales somewhere all these together uh you know meaning all these words will help you really have a wonderful quality draft of your report with regards to charts and statistical data along with these you can also use phrases like just above it's just about 20% in the previous uh, the customers have dropped uh, just about 50% 20% when it is 21 or maybe 20 plus something little more than nearly close to considerably low marginally high slightly below almost 50% increased to 50% and increased by 50% sometimes you know these prepositions are very confusing increased to 50% and increased by 50% if we make an error this will surely not be considered as typo people will really come to know that we are not comfortable and we are not competent with regards to our language 
increased to 50% millimeters. 50% and by 50% it has really jumped from 10 to 20. If it has happened, it is 50%. Same as progressive, right? So we can use these, but all these can be used mindfully. What are the linking words, the transition words? Although, however, very frequently we know of these words. We also use it, but do we use it mindfully? Next time when you write a report or some text, some business correspondence, try to use them mindfully. Yes, by the way, during lockdown, I have uh, you know come across lots of Facebook posts wherein men are trying their hands with cooking. I'm sure at your homes also you may have seen it. Um, no, I'm not that fortunate that my husband does that. Anyway, but uh, they use some ingredients, right? While cooking, you can take these as ingredients while writing a business report. Very, very important to use these ingredients mindfully. Proportionately, the way we use spices in all our dishes. Another complex task. And this task is for you. So, you are going to write it. But before you write, let's read it together. Your company specializes in producing and exporting frozen food products throughout Europe. You are looking for a new transport company to distribute the products. Your export manager has received this leaflet from Sendit. Sendit is a company, a logistics company, and has asked you to write a letter to find out more information. I'm sure you're going to not proceed further with reading this, but you should read this first piece of information because this is very, very informative. It will actually clear your role and your target reader. Your company specializes in producing and exporting frozen food products throughout Europe. So you're dealing with producing and exporting frozen food products. You understand your role now. You are looking for a new transport company. The previous transport, co transport company that was associated with your company, probably you have discontinued with them. You want them to distribute your products. You are based and you are actually doing business in entire Europe. Your export manager has received this leaflet, which is a leaflet of a logistics company. And the name of that company is Send It, and has asked you to write a letter to find out more information. So who is going to read the letter? Somebody from Send It, right? You're writing to logistics company, Send It. Now, this is what is there in the leaflet. Let's try, read and understand everything that is there in the leaflet. Send It with Send It. So this is the name of the logistics company and they ask they have a wonderful tagline and that is send it with send it. Send it logistics has 25 years experience specializing in refrigerated transport. So refrigerated transport is very much like frozen food products, right? So this is a paraphrasing skill. Serving major clients throughout Europe, that's what you want. Senior management are available to solve your logistics problems 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 24 by 7? But no, because it's a leaflet, they, should, they would prefer writing in a proper English rather than using the contractions. Ensuring that your cargo reaches its destination on time. So, ensuring word, you should actually well, reading should register that. The reason they are kind of confirming or guaranteeing it. Companies both at home and abroad. So both at home refers to enter your Europe. Offer a friendly, reliable, cost-effective service. 
Flora Bud. This leaflet is written by some marketing manager named as Flora Bud and it has all the information that you may need it, right? So one is refrigerated transport throughout Europe, uh, senior management is available 24 by 7, ensuring that it reaches on time, um, the cargo, the delivery, both at home, domestic and overseas cargo, both are welcome and the delivery is done on time with optimum condition. What does this optimum condition mean? Very, very important to understand the text when we are reading it. Difficult conditions, maybe weather conditions, maybe some lockdowns and all the other problems. Yes, in all those conditions, they have gained a reputation and they trust us, right? It's mentioned here, they trust us. Now, these are some handwritten notes made by you. What are these? How many lorries do they have? Do they deliver outside the European Union? Small cargoes, what if I don't have an entire lorry? Maybe not sufficient, just a little bit, a small amount. Do they still take it? That could be a question from my end. And some sample code for a shipment to Moscow. So that's outside Europe, right? Now, this is what I have in front of me. And when you are sitting for Cambridge Business Vantage exam, for this particular question, you get exactly 20 to 25 minutes. Presently, at this point in time, you could think 20 to 25 minutes, oh, that's too much. I can just finish it in five or 10 minutes. My dear friends, it's not that easy when you're producing and you a text with the rubrics that are designed by Cambridge English. Yes, you will be seeing some rubrics in your chat window. Also along with it, which you could refer later on. And the letter that you are going to write needs to be, needs to have only 120 to 140 words. Fine. Can I give you a moment to scribble something? Oh, you've already started. Fantastic. Shall I show you the simple answer that's written? And understand and improve. How can we write an answer which provides an impeccable impression? Here it is. Mm, yes, this is what we wanted to highlight and show it to you. But you've already done it. This is the question. Specializing and all that we've already discussed. So we'll not take much time out here. And we'll proceed to the sample answer. Dear Miss Bird, I am writing with reference to your advertisement because it was a leaflet in Frozen World magazine and would be interested to have further information about the service your company offers. We are a producer of frozen food products based in Denmark. And at present, we are looking for a new transport company to make regular deliveries to different parts of Europe. Firstly, could you tell me if you make deliveries to countries outside the European Union, Russia, for example? I would also like to know how many lorries you have and whether you are able to deal with small cargoes which do not occupy a complete lorry. Finally, I would be grateful if you could give us a sample quotation for a shipment of 40 tons of frozen fish from Denmark to Vienna so that we can have an idea of your prices. I look forward to hearing from you. Now, this is the response as a sample answer for the letter that needs to be drafted of this particular question. I know I'm not giving you enough time to read or reread that simple answer. We will study that. I repeat, we will study it in detail. But this is what it is, and you are supposed to be careful about 
including all the points that are thought about and are mentioned in the leaflet. So when you're writing an answer, you can say, I'm writing with reference to your advertisement or maybe a leaflet, anything is okay. In Frozen World Magazine, this is created by me, right? So you can write maybe magazine, a website, or anywhere, a newspaper, and would be interested to have further information about the service your company offers. So your first line talks about why are you writing the letter to Miss Bud. It should be very clear to her in the very first opening, right? And would be interested to have further information about the service your company offers. So further information, that's what you aim to write for? Okay. You are a producer of frozen food products. Now, who are you? You're introducing yourself. And this is very, very important. We are a producer of frozen food products. Where are you based? In Denmark. This is again created. And at present, we are looking for a new transport company. So what are you looking for? To understand this, their services, and what are your expectations? New transport company to make regular deliveries to different parts of Europe. Now, point number one. So what have you used? The transition word. Firstly, could you tell me if you make deliveries to countries outside the European Union? For example, Russia. So there is a question mark here. You are asking a question. Could you tell me? Could you let us know? Anything is okay. I would also like to know how many lorries you have and whether you are able to deal with small cargoes which do not occupy a complete lorry. That was a special mention that you have written as a handwritten note. And finally, so here it is also, I would also like to know, it could be additionally, furthermore, Anything can be used as a transition here. Finally, I would be grateful if you could give us a sample quotation for a shipment of 40 tons of frozen fish from Denmark to Vienna so that we can have an idea of your prices. So here you are giving them some shipment to deliver and at the same time you are expecting them to give a some rough proposal because you would want to have an idea about the, their pricing, right? And finally, I look forward to hearing from you. This is what is the simple answer. But looking at the Cambridge rubrics for writing at B2 level, the intermediate level, and the simple answer, does it match? Let's have a check. I am writing with reference to the phrasal verb again used. These phrases actually enriches your text, your content, your advertisement in frozen world and would be interested to have further. This particular phrase and would be interested to have further information that is actually helping you to create a complex sentence structure. You've already, in the opening, you've already mentioned the purpose of writing letter to Miss Bird. We are a producer. Now you are introducing yourself. Friends, when you write an application letter for a new job, don't you introduce yourself who you are somewhere and your skill sets? You do, right? Similarly, when you're writing for the first time to any business associate or maybe a prospective client or somebody, you must introduce yourself. And that's why who you are. You are a producer of a frozen food product based in Denmark. And at present, the reason to write at present, we are looking for. So right now, presently, currently, all these words can be used. We're looking for a new transport company to make regular deliveries 
the word regular mentions that you are going to be regular with the deliveries and they'll get a lot of business from you. Firstly, to begin with, initially, could you let me know, first of all, all these could be used. Let me know if you make deliveries to countries outside European Union, Russia, for example, because Mo Moscow, you have already mentioned, you have something in specific to deliver in Moscow and you have mentioned that, right? That's what you want to know first. I would also like to know how many lorries you have. That was what was noted down in your handwritten note. Whether you are able to deal with small cargoes, so whether you are able to deal with and which will not occupy complete loading. So that's what you've already mentioned. And again, few more transition words. Finally, to conclude, I would be grateful if you could give us sample quotation of 40 tons of frozen fish from Denmark to Vienna. So you've already mentioned and that will give you a rough idea about their costing, the pricing from, hence these places are important to mention so that and that's reasoned out very well here right so we can have an idea of your pricing this particular sample answer matches with the rubrics that Cambridge has set at B2 level for business English friends I really really want you to go through probably the presentation and all the links shared with you in the chat window so that you can match the expectation of Cambridge English and the simple answers, the tasks that are there. This particular webinar is not just only to mention and talk about Cambridge qualifications, but indirectly to help you understand what is a business writing and how Enrolling for a course can actually help you gain the skills that you want for yourself. It's very, very true, right? When the tough gets going, the going gets tough. It's mentioned and we know about it. So what is it? If I have a goal to achieve and aim for myself, that I want to shed a few kilos of weight. Can I sit and chair for hours and have everything and still dream of losing some kilos? No, not possible. I need to set a target, a goal for myself and consistently work for it. Only then I can achieve it. Similarly, when you guys want to improve your business writing skills. It would be recommended, advised, suggested from us, from anybody. Look at all the skills, all the links that are shared with you in the chat window, right? And see, go take up your diagnostic, set yourself the target and you will be able to have impeccable impressions by writing perfect business correspondence. These are the tips to have perfect piece of business writing. By the way, have you set your goal to enhance your skills? Great, fantastic. To, uh, these are the tips to have wonderful business writings. Read the message or the question carefully. From anyone it could be, right? Then reread and identify your role, the message, the reader, the keywords, everything should be read carefully. Do not miss to add all the ingredients, linking words, phrasal words, relative pronouns, everything. By the way, in the chat window, you may have also seen there are some websites from Cambridge wherein you can practice linking words, phrasal verbs, relative pronouns, and all grammar exercises. They are all for free and available for all of us. Try and build complex sentence structure. Proofread your own text. 
redraft or edit where necessary. All these are very, very important. Now, did you enjoy the webinar and have you built your skill? Has this particular webinar contributed in some value addition that you were aiming to have for Business English? I'm looking forward for your comments. And I'm sure there are a lot of questions posed by you. And I'm very happy for the same. I'm going to look at all the comments and the questions that you may have during the webinar. It is now time for us to answer all your queries and questions that you may have. Oh, we have plenty of questions here. Yes, uh, Ms. Palak has asked how grammar is vital in business English or in business writing. It is, um, let me reply this with an analogy. How is the, you know, I mean, uh, in case if you are making a wonderful dish, you can think of a wonderful cake that you are thinking to bake it or any dish that you wish to have. How important are those ingredients that you're using it? Extremely important. Similarly, grammar is very, very vital. The blood that runs in our stream, right, is very important and vital for our body. Similarly, Grammar is equally important for business writing. A lot of grammar exercises are there on Cambridge website. Refer to this, uh, refer to those, practice it. It will be of great help to you. Uh, material links, yes, Ms. Gina, we can send those material links. The links that are shared in the chat window will be shared through an email. You should be receiving an email very soon from us. Grammar skills for BEC can be learned by visiting the link that is already shared uh, in the chat window. And that particular link is from Cambridge English. Yes, you can definitely enroll uh, with SHKC Exam Center through, I mean, at RK University and you can learn through distance mode. Yes, Ms. Sona Singh, that's a question. You can definitely take admissions. Uh, no need to come and visit us personally. This particular webinar it was actually to give you an overview about business writing skills with regards to intermediate level. But if you want to actually learn the entire course, we will soon come up with an online course of business English B2 level, B back vintage and back prelims, both. And you can enroll in yourself that will have enough exposure to LSRW, listening, speaking, reading, writing skills. You will have a lot of resource materials. We will also suggest reference books to you. A lot of links will be shared. You can enroll to back courses through distance mode. We will be very uh, soon coming up with an online course. You want to give further exams, future exams, Mr. Umang Barot, we welcome you and you can surely take admissions 5th September. Please mark your calendar. 5th September is the exam date. We are going to conduct our exam on 5th September. Back prelims, back vintage, and mostly it's going to be a computer-based exams that we are going to conduct in the computer labs out here at RK University. And you can register yourself. The registration form, all the links and the information you will be receiving through an email from us very soon. Uh, it takes, you have, Mr. Deepak Savalia, you've asked about the writing a report for an exam. Back writing at back vintage level will give you only 45 minutes and you got to produce two tasks, two pieces of writing tasks. 
wherein the first writing should get over within 15 to 20 minutes and the next writing should have around 20 to 25 minutes. I would really want you to reread all the answers and hence you, you should spare some time after writing both the pieces of writing. Um, may we have this access to this PPT? Sure, why not? Entire PPT is designed for our learners and anybody who wants to improve their language. It will be shared with you through email. I'm so sorry, Ms. Sharma, I will not be able to give you any certificate because as I have mentioned, this is just an overview. This is not an online course. We have only presented to you an overview of back business English writing skills. And hence, for certificate, I would really want Ms. Sharma, you to enroll to our online course. Thank you. Uh, difference in between increase and surge. Sir, Mr. Madhusudan, let me tell you, these are phrase, paraphrasing skills, right? You may use these words. And there, there is a slight difference in while using these words, surge high, exponential rise, um, you can say peak. All these words could be used seeing the statistical uh, data on the graph that you may have. Paraphrasing skills will help you a lot in business English. Uh, yes, the dates are already shared. The exam dates are already shared. It's with September. Please, the first and foremost step from now is go to the diagnostic link, take yourself a diagnostic exam, and when you finish that exam, you will have your screen. Uh, you will have your score on your screen. Take a screenshot of the same, reply, send that uh, screenshot to us. We will suggest you which exam you should take or else in the screen itself, it will be mentioned that you can take B1 or B2 exam. Both these exams can be taken. The prices for the exams will be shared with you soon over the email. Uh, Yes, you can surely go through the session once again. The YouTube link is open and you can go through the session again from the beginning in case if you have missed any part. PPT will be shared with you. Pronunciations, fantastic. How to improve the pronunciations or go to Cambridge website. It will also help you to learn pronunciations. Online courses, you will be Informed very soon, Mr. Prithviraj, uh, when are we uh, starting? Uh, you will soon get to know when are we starting the online course. Uh, a mail will be sent to you for the same. Uh, great, Miss Payal. Yes, Payal, how are you? It's nice to see you that you are, you are attending this particular webinar and you being our alumni, Proud computer department, I remember you so well. Your linguistic skills, I am sure you have improved. Uh, Payal, yes, those who have already given vantage, you should aim for business higher. There are several qualifications Cambridge English has. Please go to the CEFR video that is shared with you. You can take up and look for more Cambridge qualifications. I repeat, it is an added credential in your portfolio. It will always help you. And the journey will help you learn linguistic skills. Um, what more do we have? I think I have answered most of your questions that you may have. I'm looking forward for your comments. Your comments are valuable. You can also drop in an email to us wherein uh, we would really, really uh, like to have your wonderful suggestions. If you have to share some things, some comments, questions, more or less, we have answered. Soon we may come up with another webinar for another productive skill. There are writing and speaking, both these skills, which are productive skills, and we may come up quickly with a productive skills speaking skills webinar. Hope to see you there. Thank you for your wonderful time and I'm sure you have invested your time and we have tried to enhance your skills. 
Thank you so much. Stay safe and have a great day ahead. Thank you.